Finance Minister Chrystia Freeland has just dropped a debt bomb on Canadians, blasting the national debt ceiling to a stratospheric $2.1 trillion. This historic hike marks the second time in just three years the big-spending Liberals have cranked up Canada's credit limit instead of reining in their out-of-control budget deficits. With this move, Trudeau and his debt-loving government have shown once again they treat public money like it's free at an open bar. They'd already doubled Canada's total debt since taking power and have plans to keep the spending party going with no end in sight. Meanwhile, hardworking Canadians are left stuck footing the bill, struggling with crazy inflation and rising costs while wages stagnate. It's like we're on a runaway train to financial crisisville, and the Liberal government is punching the accelerator instead of the brakes. The only ones who will fare well in this Liberal debt spiral are the political cronies benefiting from the PM's lavish spending largesse. For the rest of Canada's present and future, it spells a legacy of diminished prosperity and opportunity. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. The recent announcement by Finance Minister Chrystia Freeland to raise Canada's national debt ceiling to a historic $2.1 trillion is yet another damning example of the fiscal irresponsibility and reckless spending by Justin Trudeau's Liberal government. This massive 16% increase comes just three years after the previous hike to $1.83 trillion in 2021, showing how quickly the Liberals have driven up Canada's debt burden since taking power in 2015. When Trudeau first took office, the debt ceiling stood at $1.17 trillion. In just eight years, his government has increased it by a staggering $930 billion, or nearly 8%. This is an unprecedented debt explosion in such a short time frame suggest that the federal government budget isn't landing with younger would-be voters you are targeting. How are you going to win back these, uh, those people who post-pandemic have decided they're no longer interested in uh, big government playing a role in their lives? This budget is about solving problems. This is about making sure that an economy that no longer works as well as it should, as well as it did for parents' and grandparents' generations, actually works for young people. This is about building a strong economy for the future. This isn't about politics. <clears throat> this is about making sure that the system, the economy, and the government of Canada can meet the moment the Canadians need it too. And in that question, yes, there is a choice the Canadians are going to be facing in a year and a half about what kind of country we are whether governments should just get out of the way and leave people to fend for themselves, which is what Pierre Polyev is proposing with his austerity cuts uh, and advantages for the rich with his trickle-down approach. That's one of the choices where governments aren't there to make sure that there are opportunities for everyone, aren't there to make sure there's fairness for every generation, versus what we're putting on the table and what we're actually doing. I am confident that as Canadians see these measures happening, they will start being more optimistic about their future the way we need them to be, to grow a strong economy, to build a stronger future. That's our focus, fairness for every generation, starting right now. And that's uh, where we're going to continue to put all our emphasis. Trudeau and his team seem to think they have an unlimited credit card when it comes to spending Canadians' hard-earned tax dollars. They have consistently run massive budget deficits, with no plan or even intention to balance the budget anytime soon. All this overspending has doubled Canada's debt since Trudeau took office. We now owe over $1.3 trillion in climbing. That's over $33,000 for every man, woman, and child in Canada. And what do we have to show for it? Groceries, gas, rent, and mortgages continue going up while wages stagnate. Millions still lack access to a family doctor. Our infrastructure continues crumbling despite promises to rebuild it. Clearly, all this debt spending has failed to make life more affordable for average Canadians. Yet every time they hit the debt ceiling, the Liberals just raise it even higher to enable more spending and debt. When will it end? At this rate, we will owe several trillion dollars by the end of the decade. Future generations will be shackled paying interest on all this debt rather than investing in their priorities. Despite Minister Freeland's assurances, this is essentially giving the Liberals a blank check. Raising the debt ceiling does not control spending. It enables more of it. They can continue their vote-buying spree with our money while avoiding any real fiscal restraint or accountability. 
Canadians are rightfully freaking out. Inflation's running wild and it's high time for some financial smarts, not just throwing money around like it's going out of style. The Liberals claim austerity would mean leaving Canadians to fend for themselves. Yes, there are politicians who sit back and say, no, 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 no. We've got to balance the budget at all costs, even if it means not investing in Canadian workers and investing in the future. Well, I think they're wrong. And that's part of the choice Canadians get to make over the coming year and a half when we get to a federal election. Are we a confident country that invests in ourselves, in our workers, in our future? Or do we sit back and say, okay, we'll let Canadians sort themselves out? This is ridiculous fear monitoring. Getting spending under control and balancing the budget does not require drastic cuts. It means setting priorities, showing some discipline, and focusing spending on what matters most rather than wasting billions on pet projects and favors for pals. The sad reality is Trudeau and his crew have never been big on watching the pennies or thinking about the big picture when it comes to debt. Even before the pandemic hit, they were breaking promises left and right about keeping deficits in check. And now, they've thrown caution to the wind completely. Their moves are all about scoring quick wins, even if it means ignoring what's best for the country down the road. And the galling hypocrisy of it all. Trudeau claims generational fairness is behind their policies, that he wants to help younger Canadians get ahead. Today, we're here to tell you about our first announcement of what will be in our budget 2024. But before I get into the details, I want to step back and talk to you about what this upcoming budget is going to be all about. In one word, fairness. Why? Because for Canada to succeed, we need everyone to succeed. When you look out at the economy these days, it just doesn't feel very fair. With inflation, with high housing costs, with so much uncertainty here and across the world, it feels like there are some people doing really, really well, but a lot of people feel stuck or worse, like they're falling behind. And when you look at who's feeling it the most, it's hard not to think about the young people trying to get their lives started in these complex times. Les jeunes ont peut-être les moyens de se payer les frais de scolarité pour aller à l'université, mais les loyers élevés rendent leurs options limitées. Après leurs études, ils font face à des pressions que leurs parents n'avaient pas. Maybe young people want to start a family, but they don't know how they can afford something bigger than a one-bedroom apartment. And with the costs of groceries, monthly bills, and all the other realities of life going up, 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 well, that can make it hard to save for the future hard to get ahead. This is just one of the things that we're going to be doing in this upcoming budget to build an economy that is fair for every generation. So it's more like generational debt, not generational fairness, right? Trudeau. What a joke. He is saddling the next generation with a mountain of debt that will take decades to pay down. They are the ones who will suffer most from his fiscal mismanagement. Millennials and Gen Z are dealing with crazy expensive housing, wages that just won't budge, and jobs that are up in the air. And guess what? The Trudeau government isn't making things any easier. Take their housing moves, for instance. Instead of boosting the supply, they're only pumping up the demand, making prices shoot through the roof, and making it impossible for a lot of young folks to even think about buying. Renters are getting the worst of it. Rent prices are going nuts all over Canada. But instead of doing something big to get more rental places out there, the Liberals are just throwing out bits and pieces of solutions, like this renter's rights thing they're talking about. It might sound good for the cameras, but it's not doing squat to bring down housing costs. Everything Trudeau does seems aimed at benefiting today's older generations who own homes already, while leaving young people stuck renting. This is shamefully unfair for Canada's future. A country that leaves its youth struggling to achieve a basic middle-class lifestyle is badly failing them. The Trudeau crew isn't doing any favors for the younger crowd. They're making it harder for young people to find jobs, piling on the debt, messing with their retirement plans, and making them fork out tons of taxes to pay for stuff they won't even benefit from. It's making the gap between generations even wider and it's not looking good for Canada's future. This mounting generational unfairness threatens Canada's future prosperity. Our long-term well-being depends on helping today's younger generations improve their economic prospects and achieve a better quality of life. Instead, Trudeau's policies are actively undermining generational fairness and opportunity. Plus, automakers are pumping the brakes on EVs because not as many people are buying them as expected. But Trudeau, he's going all out, promising the biggest handout to auto manufacturers ever seen in Canada. His big dream? 
getting 100% of light trucks and SUVs to be emissions free by 2035. This is a historic day with the largest auto investment in Canada's history. Because today, Honda is making Canadian automotive history. With this announcement, we will be investing to create Canada's first comprehensive electric vehicle supply chain from start to finish. In Canada. will be built with four new manufacturing plants in Ontario, including an EV assembly plant, a standalone battery manufacturing plant, and two plants for battery components. These investments will create well over a thousand well-paying manufacturing jobs, as well as many, many construction jobs, and of course, jobs all across Ontario and the country for auto parts suppliers. Honda has set a goal to make EVs represent 100% of vehicle sales by 2040. In Canada, our target is that 100% of all light-duty cars and passenger truck sales be zero emission by 2035. As a great Canadian once said, that is where the puck is going and that is where we're going to be. Today is a great day for workers, for Honda, for Ontario, and it's a great day for Canada. It just goes to show how out of touch Trudeau is with what's really going on in the economy. As living costs shoot through the roof, fewer and fewer Canadians can even think about splashing out on fancy EVs. But Trudeau, He's all about throwing our hard-earned tax dollars at huge subsidies so the rich can drive around feeling good about themselves. Canadians deserve better. Younger generations deserve better. We need competent, fiscally responsible leadership that will rein in reckless spending, balance the budget, reduce the debt burden, and implement policies to truly promote generational fairness. The Trudeau Liberals have proven themselves incapable of this. Their limitless spending and soaring debt do nothing to help young Canadians achieve their dreams. We urgently need a government that will exercise real financial discipline, curb irresponsible deficits, and enact policies to improve affordability and expand opportunity for the next generation. Well, that's all for now. How many zeros will be in Canada's debt by the time Trudeau is finished? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.